Hey, Sabrina. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Dr. David. Look at everybody. Hey, Kadena. Hi. This Hello. is the reunion. Oh my God. So you, first of all, you all are going to meet each other. That's exciting in itself. Hey, Kimberly. I saw Hi. Kimberly not too long ago. How are you? I'm good, Pam. How are you? Hello, Sabri Sabrina. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> That's what I said. I haven't <laughs> seen her forever. So, Dr. Dave, you got to come off of your camera now. We haven't seen each other in a while. This, this is this is a this is like a reunion. So, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Welcome, welcome. There you go. Oh, you're out there in sunny Florida. Okay, sunny Florida. <laughs> all right, all right. So, make us all jealous, will you? Will you? <laughs> well, I wanted to just welcome you guys because we haven't had a reunion ever. And uh, I wanted to just check in with everybody over the last two years. We've had some some issues with with life it, it, around the world called COVID-19. So I wanted to just check in with everyone to see how everyone was doing, what things that they're working on, and uh, give you maybe three tips and introduce you to Kadena, who is also my business partner and also a business coach as well. Uh, because she's a revenue strategist, but really just seeing if you all are doing, there's the judge, doing the things that you set out to do. And I want to just give three tips too, just really starting out about that, about some of the things that I really wanted to just share uh, if you haven't, because a, a lot of us are, here's Rodney, a lot of us are speakers and authors, and we're content creators, uh, we're movie reviewers and podcasters, all the things in the creative space, right? And it's all good, but we need to make some money. And I'm gonna just name three things, just making money, just making sure that you're doing this. So PR, you know, that's my thing. I love PR. Publicity is what I've been trained for. That's what I do, right? So publicity is good, having good photos. Hey, Judge, hey, Rodney, Rodney, you know, you gotta come off the, you gotta come off the camera, man. Uh, and, uh, and so I want all of you to introduce yourself, but there's just three things. And I just want you to think about this. One, are you making sure that you're consistent with your messaging? Because you all have. Are you making offers that are consistent with the messaging? And are people knowing what you're selling so that they can buy it or book you? Okay. And that's really it. That's like, that's like, that's it. So you got to get in front of the people that will buy what you have because you've been consistent with the message. And don't just say, oh, I did a course or I did a book, no one bought it, or I, I did a webinar and no one bought it, or I tried to put myself out there and no one booked me. It's a continuous thing. How long have I been doing this? 20 years. years. 30 years, right. <laughs> 20 years in my business. But, you know, so it's, it's a consistent thing. And I just want to make sure that you're not, going after the shiny objects. The things that I really share with you all in the Branding Accelerator are the things that I would say are the main basics, right? How to build the brand. And we kind of got into some gritty things. You know, Sabrina would know that I would tell her, Sabrina, we got to get your website right. And, you know, Kimberly, we got to get you some photos. And Judge, we got to get you in some book contests. And, and you know, Dr. David, we got to make sure that you get your your messaging together who are you what are you doing you know rodney i gotta make sure that you don't do those videos like you were doing when we first saw each other you know so now he's like got that together and you know that when you all first started with me most of you all i ain't gonna say it but some of y'all was a hot mess okay like it's like oh she just tried to get me to get my email together i couldn't even get that together <laughs> She told me to come off of that AOL and I'm mad about it, but you stuck with it. So that's what I'm just so happy about. You stuck with it. So I'm just with those three things, making sure your messaging is clear, having offers, being consistent, and then showing up and just selling that over and over again to the, to the people who will buy because your offer is your main thing because you have the foundation, right? You have the foundation, Sabrina, you got the foundation, Kimberly, got the, you have so much clarity now, but it's about just really being consistent and not just one time like, oh, I put it out there and nobody bought it, but being relentless, consistent, showing different ways of sharing it, doing webinars on a regular basis like this, like a Zoom, 
showing up in clubhouse, talking, sharing, not just really like beating up people, but just people who are going to be attracted to you. Because I'm telling you, there's some people that I have found on Clubhouse who've become my clients because they heard me. I mean, talking about thousands of dollars. They just, you know, one day out of the blue, I got a text and it was like, she worked for this big company in Arkansas. And she wanted me to train all of these people and media relations and all this and that. And I was like, how did you hear about me? She said, Clubhouse, I've been following you for months. I'm like, really? She hardly ever said anything. Kadena had one today. Lady just was like, no, it was two over the last two days. It says, I just come to your clubhouse and I just hear you. And then they're like, I want to work with you. And it's like, so we have to talk and not just post, post and ghost. You know what I'm saying? So, so I want we to do like a little bit of a round robin. But first, I wanted to introduce Kadena as well, because you say, well, who is Kadena? She wasn't a branding accelerator. She was a guest in one of the branding accelerators. So that was one of the things. But every Tuesday and Thursday, which is a Thursday tonight, we, we do a clubhouse at nine o'clock. And the first, you know, COVID kind of hit in 20, well, it was 2021, towards the end of 2021, COVID, we were still here. There's Dexter. We were still kind of like in COVID and people weren't going out. So we started Clubhouse and that was just really like a social audio app that really, you know, people out, people were Zoomed out. Like we Zoomed out. It's like I'm Zoomed out. And so Clubhouse became the thing. So we were doing Clubhouse every day for about six months, like nine o'clock. We did it every day, Monday through Friday. Then it was like Monday through it was Monday through Sunday. It was seven days a week, nine o'clock. Then it then it became just um it became just Monday through Friday. And what happened was that the last cohort, it's um, it was uh, Judge was in it, Monica and Priscilla. They were on the clubhouse with us. That's what that was part of their, uh, I guess you said real life experience. So we will have our brand accelerated like from seven to 830. They will have a little bit of break, go get some water. And then they will be on clubhouse and they'd have to introduce themselves. They'd have to talk. They'd have to meet people. And it, it was like, it was real live. And so Judge still comes on. She still comes on. And I can tell from when someone asks you, you know, tell me a little about, about yourself or introduce yourself. She went from maybe 10 minutes <laughs> to 15 minutes down to now, like I got it down to an elevator pitch, right? You know, I've got it down and it's really, it's more concise. She feels more, but it only takes practice by doing that in front of real people, in, in front of real people. And Kadena knows, cause like judge would go and she was like, Ooh, okay, we got the whole speech. I said, we don't have the introduction, but now she has it. And she's always on, Donnie brings her on the black news that I think is blacknews.com uh, or black be more news.com, I believe it is. It's in Baltimore, but she is like a regular, like go to expert. And he brings her on all the time when Judge Katanji was, um, you know, confirmed and before she was confirmed and it, George Floyd, all kind of different things, whatever it has to do with legal and her perspective, she's always on because she's good. She's practiced enough on there. And so I want to hear where you all are in terms of your where you're, you, you are, any exciting news is happening, what you have launching, where you're kind of stuck. And it's like, mm, okay, Pam, you said that I got to do what every week? I got to do a webinar, got to make offers. Mm -hmm. Yep, you do. And so Kadena will kind of tell you a little bit about where her piece is because PR and branding is one part, but really sales and marketing is another part. And that's where they have to marry each other because, and, and Sabrina is, is a financial person, so she knows that as well, but she's a financial person with a creative brain. So that's, that's like, you know, she got left and right brain going on, mm -hmm. um, but you have to know your numbers. And so I'm gonna have uh, Kadena kind of give her introduction and then I'm gonna have us do a round robin. And I'm gonna invite and try and invite the other um, accelerators too that, um, that came in as well. So Kadena, you can unmute. Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see those of you who I've met before. And for those of you who I haven't, my name is Kadena Tate. I'm a revenue strategist. And the way that I became a revenue strategist is that I started out as a speaker who was stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. I didn't realize that I deserved to be compensated for the value that I brought. 
I didn't understand how to price not only my speaker fee, but what I was selling from the stage. And so I believe that we teach that which we most need to learn or that which we learned so that we can help somebody else avoid the ditch that we fell in. And that's what I do. So there's two things that I want you to know tonight. Number one, speaking is a business. Speaking is a business, okay? I need you to go to my website, kadinatate.com, click on the shop and download the free resource called Reinvent Your Speaker Business Model because speaking is a business. I, I cannot emphasize this enough. It's gonna save you time, money, energy, and resources. And the second thing that I need you to know is that you have to be loud and proud about the value that you bring because if you're invisible, nobody can hire you, right? So don't hide your gift under a bushel. Be loud and proud, get out there and be bold. And just remember that the speaker sets the tone for events. And so just really like stand strongly in your gift. You got this. Thank you, Pam. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, it is. You know, a lot of times when we first are starting out and I remember when I was first starting out, my go-to fee for anything was $100. It was like, how much is it? A hundred dollars. And it was like crazy because I had been working with agencies and working for corporations. So I didn't know how to charge. I didn't know if people would pay. I was like, but you know, and so I got over that when I got a coach that, let me tell you, cause he was like, this is crazy. As much experience as you have, why are you charging that? I was like, what am I supposed to charge? I don't know. So anyway, that's, that's, that's my thing. So I got over that. I realized that this is a, a value that I bring to people that when I, when I walk in the gift, I can really change people's lives. And that's the value of that. I'm giving that value to someone so they should compensate me for that. So that's really, really key. So I remember when I finally broke through it, one of the things that um, this is before Kadena, Andrew Morrison said to me, he said, Pam, let me tell you, it's okay. You don't have to work with broke folk. And he says, you, you think that you're being a good person, a good Christian, because you want to work with broke folk. He says, you're going to be just like the broke folk working with the broke folk. Okay. So, so you need to, in order to help the broke folk, you got to rise up a little bit. Then you could go back and help them. He says, but you're not really helping them by doing that. So anyway, that's just my story. I'm going to just let that go. So Sabrina, I want you to kind of give your intro, then Kimberly, then uh, Judge, I'm going to see when David, he settles down, he's walking around. I'm going to have Rodney. Rodney's moving. Dexter, I want Dexter to as well. So Rodney, can you speak after you go after Judge? I would I would love to. I, I am, this is my baby girl's birthday. She hey, don't want to happy me. birthday. I think I've seen a TikTok of you or before or <laughs> yes. IG or something. Absolutely. So yes. I'm going to respectfully beautiful Kadena, everybody, Dr. David, I'm on daddy duty, but okay. I wanted to show presence. I am, I'm loving what's going on, uh, but I am on daddy duty today. So I just wanted to have, wait for my moment to say, hello, I'm present. And now I'm about to go be a good dad. You want to say first what, what you have going on and give your introduction because the other brand new celebrators don't absolutely. know you. Okay. I, absolutely. Absolutely. So hello, everybody. I am Rodney C. Burris. I am a corporate trainer that focuses on leadership, mindset, and development. Um, I, through my experience with Pam, you guys know what that's like. We've all been through the same courses of material. Um, I eventually started getting myself to landing contracts kind of consistently. Um, so, uh, right now I have one contract that is a $40,000 contract, uh, to do, um, speaking and training and some visibility work for a project that we have going on in Baltimore. Uh, I also have another one that is a very unique one because I'm training just a few hours a week. I mean, a month, but it, it pays well. It pays well. So, those um, are the good ones. Yeah, those are the good ones. And so <laughs> I just, it took me out of the mindset of do this from my heart, kind of like the church, the community service. I was in politics in Baltimore for a while, so you can't really be bribed and paid for a lot of that work. And so that was ingrained in me, nonprofit work. And so after getting uh, several months, a year and a half of being fussed at by Kadena and Pam, I finally got it together, um, saw the light, and uh, I look forward to growing and continuing. So that's where I am. Are you running for something? Are you running for something? Rodney, are you running for something? No, 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 no more politics. 
No politics. No more politics. No, okay. I'm done with that. <laughs> okay. I'm making my impact right now, and I'm and I'm enjoying how I'm having it. Yes, that is so good. I am so glad because you had the talent in you the whole time, consistently being in front of the right people, making the offers and making the the sales calls is really where it where it is because yeah. they're not. Yeah, yeah. So that is really really good. What has been the biggest thing before I let you go? Because I want your daughter to know that your dad is really, that, that he puts you as priority number one. So <laughs> she's so shy. Uh, what was the main thing that you took away from the Brandy Accelerator? If I were to explain it to someone else that says, this is a program that will help people do what? What was it? What did it, it does something different for everyone. So it hits everybody different. So what was it for um, you? So on the, there was something tangible and intangible. Um, the, I'm gonna start with the intangible. So the first piece was humility. And, and I say that because I wasn't a new speaker when I met the Brandon Accelerated Program, when I met Pam Perry. I had been doing it for a long time. I probably had my 10,000 hours as they say that cliche. Um, I'm very comfortable in diverse settings. It doesn't matter what the audience demographic is because I've done it. When I met him and when I met the Brandon's and when I met Kadena also, two for one, um, I realized how much I did not have. Um, there was a lot of just like hard skills that I just didn't have developed at all. So that's intangible was humility. Um, and that was a good thing. And then something tangible was the lessons. It was, I don't know how you put a word around being given access to information that you didn't know you didn't know, right? It's one thing to be like, as long as I can get connected to something, I know I need this step or this or this piece. It was information that I didn't know existed. For example, this is so embarrassing, a speaker one sheet. I never heard of that. I never needed it based on how I was living my life and doing my business. So there was a lot of like hard skills, tools. And when I met with Kadena, we were in Texas and she was, um, Kadena, the word I'm going to use is productizing. She was productizing me. Um, I never thought about myself in that way. I know how to promote myself to a degree, not the way Pam did it. Uh, but I never thought about making myself marketable as a product. And uh, I'm not the most adept at that part of it yet at all. Uh, but being exposed to those things through the Brandon Accelerator program has been invaluable. And I would recommend it to anybody that's trying to level up. And one of the things too, I, when we meet for 12 weeks, all of you guys, it makes you focus every single week on you, on your brand, okay? Because if, if you leave and you go away, um, no, no one really can do that, right? Because you're, you're not really sitting around talking with someone about your brand, what you need to do next. So that's one of the main things, even with my coach, is that I know that I have to, when I have to show up, it's like, I have a kind of like, what, do, what did you do next? What are you doing? Um, what's, what was the outcome of that webinar? Uh, how did that sales page convert? You know, whatever, whatever. And so those are the, the main things. So yeah, so it is a tangible and the intangible. The, the intangible is the humility, but also to being coachable, being coachable, yeah. knowing that you don't, you know, what you don't know. Because the first time, he was in Speakers Magazine and he'll tell the story. I've heard him tell it before. He said how I just ripped him. It was like, <laughs> like where are these photos going? How are we going to get these together? What is this bio? I said, I can't even find a video of you. I, and then it was just, it was all in love because I knew he had the it factor. He did. He had the it factor. It's like he could speak. He's very fluid. But then his brand over here was just not right. And I was like, we got to match your look, your aesthetics with where you are. And he yeah. got it all together. So I'm just proud of you, Rodney Seabers. And we, so. did, oh, we did Rodney always Seabers. add the C to it. So that's one of the main things, too. We're going to always add the C. <laughs> Rodney Christopher Burris. Rodney Christopher Burris. Rodney Seabers. Yeah. I listen, I tell people, Stan, our good buddy, he put something out with me and I said, sir, respectfully, Pam Perry said, if my name is going to be up in lights, that it needs to have the C. So I tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you be consistent. That's all. Just be consistent. And, and you notice one of the simple things too, when we're on Zoom, all of us too, is to make your URL your name. 
Yes. You know, because that, that was one of the first things I always told you all to buy your name at your URL. So make sure that when it's up there, people staring at it for 15, 20 minutes that so they're looking at drpampier.com or they're looking at monicamorgansteaks.com or jazzlianya.com or I know you have sabrinawood.com and Kimberly, you have kimberlyrichardson.com. I do. I just uh, uh, a couple of months back uh, created Kimberly Richardson speaks.com now cool. that I'm getting out there and speaking. So yeah. cool. And then yeah. Dexter B. Jenkins.com and David, I think yours is Dr. David Walker. So match your, your zoom link with that all the time. That's just one, one little brand thing for, for, for that. So, uh, Rodney, I know that you, you're doing your, your daddy duty thing. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, again, if there's anything that we can do for you, we are going to send everybody like a little note about uh, what me and Kadena are doing so that you can, um, if you want, you can come to that uh, webinar next Tuesday. So I'll send you that in the follow-up. Okay. Cool, cool. Shout out to you, Monica Morgan. Monica, you're dynamic. She Shout out is. to everybody else too, but Monica, Thank you, you are Thank you, Rodney. Best. You as well. Great to see you, Good. everyone. Okay, folks. <laughs> I got my little applause over here. All right, I got my applause. All right, cool, cool. So who wants to go next? I, I was kind of going left or right and do Sabrina next. And kind of tell people a little bit where you started and where you are now, because it's so interesting. Hi, everyone. I'm Sabrina Wood, otherwise known as the Cinnamon Cinephile. And I started as I am a um, senior director in an accounting firm, so I am a CPA. And then I... Um, I've always loved films and just decided that I was going to go to film school. So, you know, I was going to retire and go to film school. So now I am Sabrina Wood, the Cinnamon Cinephile. I am also a screenwriter and a podcaster and a film reviewer. And Pam, yes, Pam, I'm getting paid to review films now. But <laughs> it's, it's kind of like that's kind of Pam Perry money, that old Pam Perry money. So, you know, we got to do something about that. But I am getting a check now for doing it. Oh um, so uh, thank you. And then the podcast is just a sci-fi, sci-fi chicks. The Sci-Fi Sisters, yes, sci I am sisters. the I am one of the co-hosts. I am the executive producer of the Sci-Fi Sisters, which is one of the top um, podcasts in the Trek Geek Networks. We... <laughs> We promote and produce content about Black science fiction and Afrofuturism, and uh, we always bring it back to Star Trek, but we are, I don't know, yeah, we're Trekkies, but we're Black Trekkies, okay? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but that's, but that's, a, that's a niche. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the more you niche it down, I mean, Sabrina it was is a high niche, let yeah, me it was tell so, you. It's, it was just so much. It's like, well, what do you love? What do you love? And it was like, we broke it down. It's like, okay, now we know we love it. How are we going to get paid from it? That was a process. Yeah. So the podcast has been on for a year. Uh, we got picked up by the Trek Geek Network uh, the first month that we were out. We are now uh, one of their top podcasts at, uh, and, and other people are trying to poach us from that network to another network. Uh, we'll talk about that sometime. <laughs> and uh, it has been a real ride. So we are now considered one of the, you know, we've been asked to do the openings for several other shows. So we are the ones, that, as you say, we set the tones for a lot of uh, conventions and things like that. So they they want the Sci-Fi Sisters. And this is my big story, Viacom, CBS. I got an email yesterday where Anson Mount, who is the new star of Strange New World, requested that the Sci-Fi Sisters be at the Nest Press Junket. Oh, that is huge. That is huge. Oh, what my happened? On a press, on a press junket. Know. Yes, he said, you I wanted to what a press junket was a few months ago, a few, few years ago, like a press junket. Come on now. It's like, what? I was like, Chris, what? So, I mean, I was, we were really, really thrilled. So we, we answered CBS by a comeback and said, we would love to accommodate Mr. Mount and whatever he wants to do. So, <laughs> so we will do that on Monday. And, um, I am kicking off the business. The Cinephon Cinephile has a travel group, which that was the thing that I came to you with, Pam. You know, we were talking about the travel group. And so we've so far done a trip where we take people who love movies. I focus on Black women because they love to travel in groups and they rarely go to film festival and we are telling them how to be film activists. So if you want to see different things happen in films, you have to sit your foot in the seat and tell people what you want at the film festival. So we grab people and we take them to the film festival so we can vote for all the black people. 
Yeah. And so and, we and just- And support the producers and all that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, we just did it with Passing and King Richard uh, at the Middleburg Film Festival. And we are now going to Tribeca. We're waiting for the slate of films to come out. And then we are going to take a special trip in November to the Academy Award Museum in LA which is curated by Jacqueline Stewart, who is the Black co-host of TCM. So that trip is going to launch on November. And that's what I've been doing, Pam. So you were doing it before, but you were doing it for free. But now you're really charging and making money from that. Yes. Yeah. So she was doing it for free. Like People want a party like, with Sabrina. Yeah, there you go. You have built the brand. You have built the brand. And I, I know you're charging more than $100, so that's good. That's yeah, good. yeah the trips are definitely going to be more than $100. Uh. I love it. I love it. And so just keep going with that. That is your niche. Even though you had this whole other career, you can even speak about people, how they can make that pivot. I mean, you went from being a CPA to doing film school and doing the trick. I mean, it's it's a niche. So really, that's a that's a great speech to give to any type of group that you want to speak in front of and then also tell them about like if you want to travel with Sabrina you can do this as well so it's it's a cool story I love it I love it cool and the website is good it's optimized you're keeping it up to date you're blogging podcasting on it okay all right because you gotta get traffic to it and building the we, uh, we are content monsters we there you go <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Not just not just content heavy, but a content monster, content ninja. That's it. The name the name is content. We're all content creators. So that's cool. That's cool. All right. I love it. I love it. And Kimberly, 50 Shades of, no, is it 50 Shades? 50 plus shades of us.com. <laughs> yeah, because because Kadena's thing is 50 Shades of Paid. And so oh. I know it's very similar. It's 50 plus shades of us. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Congratulations, Sabrina. Oh, my, my goodness. Um, where we started together. I'll talk about that later. Um, I'm Kimberly Richardson, international bestselling author, speaker, and founder of 50 Plus Shades of Us. And Shades is an acronym for showing how age doesn't end seasons. And I, <laughs> so I help women who are 50 and older step boldly into their next season of renewed passion and purpose using my retirementality principles. And um, I'm really excited about that. Um, it's always been a passion of mine. Um, and it, I'm actually, I actually started this just for my journey after I retired 12 years ago and I found myself in a space where I uh, experienced ageism and all those things that I thought my life would be after I retired was not. <laughs> and, um, and so it was a, a grim reality, right? And so I started blogging to hopefully inspire others who might be where I was or who was you know, nearing where I was in hopes of motivating them. And then from there, you know, it just kind of just grew, right? And I found myself um, really understanding and, and honing in on my, you know, my Argus. signature, right, my signature program, you know, how can I, you know, go beyond inspirational platform, right? And so I'm happy to report since I've been a part of uh, Pam Perry's uh, branding accelerator that was in, I believe, 2019. And so I've been able to really like target, you know, specifically what I'm able to do and how I'm able to help women. And I'm, I just actually uh, had, I'm working with some, I just had a, my um, sales funnel created because a couple of years ago, I actually started with books and I and I started with writing. And so I put together an anthology where I had uh, other women kind of come along and I was able to like, you know, create revenue from that. But the beauty in that was, you know, I was able to help other women like share their story. And so I was able to do a, a collaboration with them and I was in other solo books. Um, so now I actually have a program, a service that I can actually offer women now. Um, I'm speaking more, I've been um, offered speaking gigs. I'm gonna, I, I was just 
Uh, what are you speaking speaker. on? I was just a speaker. Well, I, I was just a speaker uh, at the February uh, Sean Fair Leadership Experience Tour. But what was, actually, oh, I'm saying like, what, are, what is your niche that you speak on? It's cause I, so, I wanna... right. And so, and I, and I, and I just want to say, so when I first spoke, I, I just had an opportunity to talk about, you know, how I got to where I am now. I'm going to be speaking on how, why, why someone would want to connect with me, how I'm able to help women, how I'm able to help them step into their necks and uh, all the things. Next. Yeah. Step into mm -hmm. their next, their next season, how, so to, women how, over... how to keep moving, how to keep moving because, you know, when we find ourselves in that 50 plus, um, you know, stage in our lives, we have been busy doing so many things for so many others. We were busy working for someone. We were busy raising our Care children. Given. Yeah, Care we were given. busy, you know, caring for our parents and, and all these things. And we actually forget who we are. And so my program uh, is going to, you know, help women like, you know, self-reflect and put the focus back on who they are. And I'm able to, you know, show them, look, this is all these things that you've done you know, it's not for not all these things that you've actually done has actually prepared you for where you are in this stage in your life. And so I help I wanna, them connect to that. I want to so, tell you uh, this, that Kimberly yeah. was shy. She never really wanted to talk a lot. <laughs> now we can't shut her up, right? <laughs> it's like, she is so, it's like when you hit that gusher, like she, this is what she was meant for, right? This is like her thing because she was like, should I talk about caregiving? Should I talk about pivots? Should, I mean, but now it's like, it's so honed in and all the products and the creativity is coming from that. That is like so good. And it took a while to really get to that niche, but you have the website, the blog, the pot, you know, all those different things. You know how to pitch yourself. What I'd like to see you is to continue to build your tribe in terms of media, because there's so many different ways where you can really share for women over 50, there's podcasts that they're listening to. There's there's um, different newspapers that they are reading because they're newspaper readers. There's magazines that they're reading. So you want to know, you want to go there, you know, and start pitching yourself in, in, in that way as well. And then create more uh, programs. And then really just making sure that you're showing up where they're showing up. Probably Facebook is probably where you find a lot of the women over 50 showing up. And they're, they're trying to figure out like, oh, okay, what is this? Kim is so consistent with that. How do I... How do I connect with her? So that's good. That is so good. I'm so proud of you. Right. I'm and I just want to say what I learned from you from the branding accelerator panel was to just get out there. So I, it's just things that I, you know, we step, taking one step after the next, after the next. And so I had to get things set up. And so now I'm there. Uh, I, you will be seeing more of me. Um, I'm, I'm about to start doing webinars. And so you know, you go. speaking more so people can really understand and find out who I am and why they want to connect with me so yeah and why you're doing what you're doing why because you it's, you. yeah yeah i love it i love it thank you oh my god i'm just so proud of you i'm feeling like that is really jackster i was about to call on you next okay well i'm gonna call on priscilla priscilla's on mic uh hey priscilla how are hello, you hello everyone hello miss kadina so glad to see you wow i have been so busy uh, there's no way I'm going to miss this reunion seeing uh, Pam and Kadena again. And Miss Lloyd and Monica, hi. They were in my. They were, they were the cohorts together, those, yes. those guys there. Mm -hmm. And then Kim and Sabrina, and then Dexter and Rodney were in, in, in theirs together. It feels like we just finished, but my goodness, I've been so busy. My uh, website. You know, we talk about the website a lot. My website was so raggedy. <laughs> I can say that now. I can say that. It was so raggedy. Um, I think Pam was trying to think of a nice way to break it down to me. And she kind of sicked Kadena on me. <laughs> And I told them both they'll never get away from me because there is so much uh, to learn. I've been a trainer for 40 years in the area of conflict resolution. I want to ask you, Kimberly Richardson, where are you from? Where are you based? Um, because I, I think we met. Right. I'm Have here. Met? Uh, I don't know, Priscilla. I'm not for certain. I don't think so. But I'm here in the Detroit area, Detroit, okay. Michigan. Yeah. 
Okay, because I thought maybe we had uh, met, but I have been a trainer for 40 years in the area of conflict resolution, and I've added on several certifications um, over, the, over time. I've done a lot of international work, but you know, what I found is that I was so busy in the last few years busy being busy, but not really making money. And I needed to, and I've done lots of good, good stuff. And I value everyone that's ever invited me to be on the team. But what's happened the last few years is that I was busy being busy and I continued to plateau. And so one of my friends continued to say to me, you need to see Pam Perry. You need to see Pam Perry, she could give you some direction. Uh, and so I finally did after much ado. And so yeah. my, <laughs> my, my website will be um, released next week, but I've, I've been so busy because I finally had my um, book signing. I held my book for a whole year because of COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. And so it was a huge, book signing, I can. I just had it uh, just a little bit ago and the vice mayor of my city sponsored it. And it was, so it was at city hall. Yeah, and yeah. So and that's, that's, that's the lowest hanging fruit. I think you were doing stuff there every month anyway, right? It, it was just, uh, that was with Kadena's suggestion, um, but the vice mayor um, said she would sponsor it without me asking her. And there were so many people that came because I kept saying, I don't care about the book so much. I just want to see my friends, especially, mm -hmm. especially women. <laughs> and they just kept coming and coming and coming. So I had elected officials there, old friends way from the other end of Miami. I li now live in Miramar. And so I'm still... So selling books is it kind of surprises me because the book was put on Amazon a year ago. It was released, but I refuse to do a book signing virtually. I'm I'm a very social person. And so when I finally did, they just kept coming and coming and coming. And I mean, I almost cried. It, they, I was so excited to see everybody. Plus you, a, you did photos there, right? Oh, it was a drone. Okay. <laughs> There's a red carpet <laughs> interviews. And then I was in the front with someone interviewing me. That was the program. Oh, it was. It was a thing. It was it a was. thing. So yeah. you have content for the rest of this year, right? To really just put a lot of those slices together. Yes. And then I was on the radio. Radio personality came. So then I was on the radio. And to top it off, I, I kid you not, I was selling books today. I'm still taking orders. People are buying with Cash App and through Zelle. So they're buying through me rather than Amazon, nah, yeah. which means you make a lot more money. Right. Um, and so I, ha I had to hit my husband to that. Don't send them to Amazon. I don't make no. any money to Amazon. No, you don't. Don't Amazon is, money. yeah. But they just keep coming, and I don't mean one book, at least five, ten, the vice president of um, um, Carnival Cruise Line, and so they, they just keep coming. So that so one, that was, one of the things, I'm going to give you a suggestion. So when you are shipping those books out, put something in there to let them know, whether it's your one sheet or a little postcard or something to know, let them know you're available. To I learned that from you and I did. Yes, <laughs> I did. that's what I'm talking about. So now the speaking uh, games will be coming along. All the yes. books come here first and yes. then I stuff them and then I send them out. Random there you go. Straight to there the you go. But it's cool. so interesting because the other thing that happened, I, I mentioned this, but I don't think you ever realized how big it was. So I've had a couple of trainings. Both of them were huge. I mean, huge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. And I was like, and I, it was, even interesting, I have never, somebody said, 
quick, quick, go cash the check. And I said, I have been so blessed. No check in 40 years have ever bounced that I received after a training. However, what was different with these trainings is they gave me the money before I even finished the training. And oh. that's just happened also. Oh, her book is about conflict resolution. Uh, she yes. went, what was the book? What was the name of the book? The book was 99 uh, Conflicts to Avoid, mm -hmm. 100 Ways to Resolve Them. And the trainings were conflict resolution during turbulent times. There you go. And you were trying to run from that for so long. I, we were like, why is she going to run from this? It's like, she's just tired because you weren't making the money. What happens is sometimes we can really like something, but then if you're not getting compensated for it, you get tired of it. And so now you, she's got this renewed energy about it. Like I can talk about conflict all day, but that's about it. Oh, you know, like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that's it. And, that's well, it. and that, so that we want to, we want to, that was, that was a major, major piece, though, and I'm rolling on that. There was drones and everything at the, at the uh, um, book signing. So little by little, I was on the radio last week, little by little pieces are being released when the situation happened with Chris Rock and Will Smith. That was amazing because people were texting me, calling me, sending me stuff via email saying, you should jump on this. You should jump on this. So and of yeah, course I did. Coach told you the same thing too. Like whenever there's a news, a news thing like that, you should really piggyback on that. That is for sure. That is for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I did. And I've been really busy. <laughs> That is so good. That is so good. So I want, uh, speaking of drones and that sort of thing, Monica, can you speak? I see that your camera's off or maybe we could go to Dr. David. Um, he's on there as well um, to talk about um, things. So one of the things I will say, Priscilla, so has your email list grown because you have all this attention? I know you said the website comes out next week. So one of the things we always talk about doing things in sequence is was there a landing page to at least collect email addresses if people were, you know, interested in you and they want to know about the topic that you're speaking on? Because you want to grow your email list. Yes, I've done some of that, but not as well as I should because they always say, be ready, don't get ready. But it was like, all of a sudden, it was just coming, 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 coming. And in the midst of this, um, send this to Kimberly, I think everyone else, and Sabrina, is um, I just, day before yesterday, was um, my input on the Kim Coles books. There's a collaboration with Kim Coles. And the title was Transformation at 70, because I'll be 70 in just a couple of months. And so it's just like it was so much all of a sudden like this and I'm I'm still literally spinning from that it hasn't slowed down yet so when you have the website that then this is a thing you could have just had like one page that says here sign up and stay connected to me download something free whatever whatever you know because it's all about the email list and when you have an email list you can always send out another say I have another book I'm speaking in your city uh, you could tag it and, and you know, just, I've got a webinar, you know, in, you know, so all of you all know that I have harped on this from day one. Social media is great and publicity is great, but it's nothing better that all of this has to turn into traffic that turns into email that turns into uh, you writing emails to the list and warming them up and turning them into clients and customers. That's really like the main things because social media is good, but you can't really share it along. People sometimes will share email along, say, hey, you need to you know, send it to their boss or whatever and say, hey, you need to have this person speak. They're really rarely going to share like their Facebook posts or something like that or Instagram at work, you know, so you want to do that. Um, Dr. David or either Dexter, Dexter does a really, really good job with his email uh, marketing. I don't know if you want to go or Dr. David, did you want to go? Go ahead, Dexter. I bow to my elders. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. It real good. <laughs> good evening, everyone. My name is Dexter B. Jenkins, and I am a, a faith-based financial mentor, which simply means I live at the intersection of 
you know, your faith and how do you actually build wealth? And so I've been working with um, Pam probably going on over two years now. It's been a minute. And uh, and Kadena and really, uh, I would say the benefit of the program that from day one has been, you know, just just enlarging my thinking around what's possible. I think for me, I was just like, you know, let me go in there and get a podcast up and then that. Y'all like, nah, that ain't how you do it, bro. And then so you go through this. this <laughs> I call it Pan Perry Boot Camp, you know. So you, <laughs> you know, they got to build, you, they got to break you down before they build you up. And so you know, all of us <laughs> that probably experience the um, the feeling of you're like you're you're almost underwater and you're trying to keep up with the assignments and all the things, and uh, at the same time, and so uh, that's been good. And then also, I, I would say, you know, any time I've been able to talk to anyone and I use Pam Perry's name, it's been an open door. You know, no, I oh, Pam, I love them. Pam. You know, I, I always joke. I said, Pam probably got Jesus on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, can, she can get you a meeting with the Lord right quick. Like, you know, so it, but they do, I do. I, I really, I see so much for you. So it's like, hey, you gotta, you gotta meet LaShawn. You gotta meet. Yeah, those, yeah. anytime those... I've, I've mentioned your name, it's been like an open door. And then when I go and show my website with you, you and uh, Kadena and um, Renita helped me out with, when they look at how my stuff is set up, you know, they they have a sense of. Um, For real. You know, you know, yeah, exactly. It's legit. And so, you know, I always tell people, said, you know, if you want to go to that next dimension to go to that next level, you know, you need to be part of, be a part of this program. But I love yeah. your emails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Email yeah. Back, I convert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I send out that every Thursday, um, you know, just to offer your, you and Renita's uh, suggestion of, you know, one a lot of times that, you know, what we're looking to do is build we're trying to sell things, but the people that we're talking to have no relationship with us. Exactly. And so when you send out something on a consistent basis, you know, it doesn't have to be anything deep, but it does have to be where, you know, it, this is not a wham, bam, thinking man type of transaction. Mm -hmm. And so when you begin to get a sense of, you know, you have a, that, that you know them and you care about them. Exactly. You sue them, see them do well, you know, it's, 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 it's well received. Uh, I said where we, where I'm at right now is just, really um, working with you guys and, you know, continue to, I think someone said earlier, you know, get the products out, you know, because there's so much in my head. Um, and then, you know, how do you get it on paper and then how do you market it and all those type of things, you know? And so, and so that's where I, I'm saying my growth is continuing to, I'm still continuing to grow in that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I've been spending a lot of time. I'm, I, I have a podcast and then I also do a TV show called Wealthy Conversations. And so we, we've been, spend a lot of time on that, you know, so those, the first episode should come out next week. Oh, good. Good. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's been good. It's been good. You know, just, can I read them your, your, your last email? So the subject line of this, just to give an idea. So the, the email list is growing slowly, but people who sign up are really serious. So the subject headline, remember he's faith and finance guy is resurrected finances. So what is Sunday? Resurrection. 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 There you go. So we got timely. So he says, hey, and he says who the person is. This is a time of year many celebrate Resurrection Sunday or Easter, as it's commonly called. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ represents the death of old things and the beginning of new things. Christ died for us to experience life and experience life more abundantly. This abundant life deals with all of our humanity, including our finances. Often going to the next level means the death of some old habits and birthing of some new habits. If you need some help in this area, feel, to, feel free to respond to this email. Talk soon, Dexter. I was like, you better bring it. That is like, <laughs> what? I was like, you better bring it. I was like, if you need to, I was like, how we just tied it together in timeliness and this and that. And very, like he would talk and finances is something people don't like to talk about and they really don't like to share a whole lot about. They just, you know, whatever. But those are the kind of things. It just needs like one or two to respond and say, yeah, I do. Or, you know, and he's been mm -hmm. sitting out every Thursday and people want to know, are you showing up? Are you serious? Do you really care? You know, yes. the no like and trust factor is always going to be big, not just on social media, but in the email. So I love that. That was so good. That is so good. How many is the email up to right now? We're at about 125. Uh, you know, if, if you're interested in getting on that on that list, go to DexterBJenkins.com. 
I was yeah. wondering. I was like, there we go. I we gotta no, always give a call to action. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I learned that from driving to the website, you know, <laughs> and then you know, as as they go to the website, if you go to my site, uh, I have a gift called the Three Ships of Wealth Building, which stands for stewardship, ownership, yes. and entrepreneurship. And so uh, that's my gift for you going over and checking out uh, you know, my website. So yeah. That is cool. And then that really is the whole point of his sales funnel, I guess Kimberly was saying, but it really is at that point, he, you, you then get a series of emails. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then at the, the last call, the last email really just invites you to have a conversation with him. Yeah. So it's not really a hard sell, you know, you got to push a whole bunch of, but it is people who are interested. And so DexterBJenkins.com. And so I was just saying like on your Zoom things, put DexterBJenkins.com so people will yeah. know like to, to, to do go that. There. I love that. I love that. That is so cool. That is so cool. It's, it's slow, but it's steady. And, and sometimes you can make thousands and thousands of dollars a month, but only 200 people on the email list. I'm just telling you, you know, so it's not really about the numbers. Cause I have thousands of people on and people run into me. I'll tell, oh, I, I, I've been following you for years. And I've been following you for years. I was like, mm -hmm, that you ain't spent like one cent. <laughs> I was like, you need to get off my list. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I, I mean, that was my experience. I mean, I followed you five for a couple of years, you know, before I made an investment. And so yeah. that just tends, that, that's that true. Tends to be But it. I'm talking yeah. about people like 10, 15 yeah. years. Yeah, 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 right. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, really? Exactly. What are you waiting on? Like the 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 the, the Messiah to come back? I mean, what yeah, are you yeah, waiting right, on? Right, but it's not, right. I'm not saying nothing new here. Uh, right. So yeah, it's real funny when people say that to me. They think they're giving me a compliment. I tell like Kadina said, it's really like, so what's wrong with you then? Why aren't you spending money with me? Why, you know, like anyway. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. So Dr. David, Dr. David, so tell us what what you got going on. We got we got uh, you down here in Florida, and um, tell him when he started. We kind of had to like do a little bit of revamping, but I think yes. he got it together now. So tell me where where you started and where you are right now. Well, um, hello everyone, Dr. David Walker, and I am a um, I am a sports leadership speaker. You know, most people uh, passively watch sports for entertainment, but sports actively turned me into an effective leader. And because of that, I talk to uh, you know high school and college students about being leaders through sports. Uh, sport, as I said, sports turned me into a leader. And uh, we also talk about education a little bit too, because if it had not been for sports, I would have never been college educated. Sports got me into college um, and, and uh, it has been a tremendous success through my education. So we're teaching about leadership through sports and education through sports. Those are the two uh, particular topics that I speak on. And then also I am a podcaster. And as Pam said, I, I have a podcast that's called Beyond the Culture. And it's the, uh, I say it's the, um, it's the show where we embrace change and challenge cultural norms and ideals. And originally I was speaking to people in business, entertainment, education. I was kind of all over the place, even though the-, the Good show, the, but it had no- yeah. No direction. The, yeah, right. The The intent was the same to talk with people who have gone beyond the culture, who have gone above barriers and and, you know, been, been successful. But I was in different fields. So uh, last March, I relaunched the podcast, same name beyond the culture. But now I, I speak to sport to speak to people in the sports community who have gone beyond barriers and become successful. So recently, I spoke with a, uh, a four-time Olympic champion. Her name is Shante Lowe. She was on uh, the Olympic team four, four different times, and uh, she was a high jumper. Uh, but we also talked about her challenge and how she overcame breast cancer and how she won through that particular challenge in her life. And then on earlier today, I had an interview uh, with a coach from uh, the University of Kansas, Dexter, uh, about a week ago, University of Kansas just won the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> yeah. And and one of their coaches uh, has been a longtime friend of mine. We go back to, to our days in New York City. And uh, I called him up and he gave me an interview 
about the season and how they overcame and how he overcame as a champion and all those different things. So I'm more focused on my, my, my zone, my niche, which is sports. Cause I know it well. And, um, so it's, it's becoming more successful. Now I am growing my podcast list because we got a podcast list and I send out a, uh, a, a weekly, uh, uh, like newsletter mm-hmm. where people, when they sign up, they get their name on the list. We're still trying to improve that. But right now, if you went to beyond the culture um, you can put in your name and, you know, email address, and then we'll start. Uh, emailing you the, the episodes as they come out each week. Um, but we, we, we're trying to, you know, add to that to just to make it more friendlier. There's a few glitches to it. But right now, if you did go there, you could sign up and you would end up being on, on our email list. But we're still trying to improve that. Uh, I'm working glitches. on it. Is, huh? it glitch, is it glitches with the? No. So here's, no, the glitch is, is that when you first sign up, it then just takes your email address and then it says verify your email. That's a Weber or is it active campaign? No, I'm, I have convert kit right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, but it doesn't give you any further message until the email blast, like with the new episodes. Oh, it doesn't do the automation in between. Right. It's right. So if you sign up today, it'll just, you'll just verify your email, but it won't communicate to you until the next you know, distribution, then, and then you'll be on the list. You'll get everything. But I needed people to know that who you, know, you are, what who you yeah. are, we got you. And, and then we're working on, I think right then, once they sign up, they should be able to get access to the podcast instead mm-hmm. of having to wait to, li- to, to, to listen to it. So, so just, just real interesting. Why did you use convert kit instead of active campaign? You know, I, I know that's what you recommend. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, that's why Pam is asking. Because <laughs> I'm um, like, we can avoid a lot of this, right? I know, you know, I know. So that was just a start. It's still, it's still on my list. And actually, I did sign up for it, and uh, but I haven't used it yet. But if if this don't yeah. work out, we'll you, get you'll it. You'll see. You'll see yeah. it. Yeah. You can use it, you can use it as a CRM and a whole lot of other things. Right, so and that's just... and that's that's what actually that's what the uh, convert kit does not do. So I'm probably going to have to go back to the active campaign. <laughs> So yeah, my, you, want a, you want a CRM, you want a customer relationship management. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. So we're settling that. Um, my new website is coming out. My current website is drdavidmwalker.com. So I do have my name and that's still live, but um, we're working on a new part, a, a new website and it, it's probably going to be drwalkerspeaks.com. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I can kind of uh, uh, hook them up. So, no matter which one you type in, it'll go to that website. It'll go to one. It'll, right. Yeah. It'll go. So, but, but that's probably what it's going to be. And then that's going to have my, you know, my public speaking, uh, you know, opportunities and, and, and speaker topics that's going to all be on okay. there. And, um, because that's the main thing that you really yeah. want. Everybody has a different business model, but with Dr. David yeah. is speaking yeah, and with other people it could be pro programs or training right? Um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, and, so that could, be, and, do, and you have a book coming out yes, soon. My book, my book is scheduled to launch. Matter of fact, I just spoke with my publisher today. We got a brand new book cover. Um, it's called the, the champion's mind. I how love to, it. Yeah. How to defeat giants and win. Mm-hmm. And Dexter is still the same material that I told you about. We just changed the title to it and we're scheduled to launch no later than Father's Day. That's what we're targeting, like a Father's Day That would Day be launch. perfect. Oh yeah. my God, please try and make that happen. Yeah. It yep. took a little bit longer than we thought, but it's it sounds like it's really shaping up. And once the book is out, you know, Judge, you can't redo it. I mean, you know, you this is out there. So you got to, if it takes years, just make it right, make it good, yep. you know? Yeah. So books are that one thing, like I said, that now blogs or podcasts, you can kind of just keep it moving. But with the book, you want it to be, it's permanent. It's like a library book, right? Yep. So yeah, I love it. I love, oh, that is so good. So make sure that all of us on here that um, come to Clubhouse, you know, share things like that, that you have a book, you have a podcast and things like that. We're there every Tuesday and Thursday. You're part of the 
cohort. You're part of that. So you can share our audience with us. I think so far we have like 2,000 people who've joined our club. Wow. And uh, every night we basically have about 40 to 50 people that come every night, That different people, right? So you want to make sure that you come and let people know that the book is there, that the podcast is there. And, you know, Sabrina, you will find fanatical friends. When you when someone says you're a Trekkie, they, I mean, they just like, oh. It's like they done found a long lost friend, like, oh my God, she's a tracker, you know? So it's it's really, everybody has their niche. And I'm just so happy that everybody's finding that. That is like the whole thing. So between Monica and Judge, uh, we got a couple of them. So Monica or Judge, who do you, you want to go Judge? Judge, okay. Yes, so they got on mute. So Judge, Judge Liana Lloyd, Twins for Justice, the hashtag, and also her YouTube channel. She's got three videos up there, but they've just went up in the last year. Each one has about 500 views for each one of her videos. So they're really, really good. Um, the last video, I, let me just tell this about the last video. So Women's History Month came, and so her book is a memoir, Judge Liana Lloyd, and it's called Your Honor, Your Honor. Her and her twin sister had a where judges sitting on this, the bench at the same time. And so I wanted to just really get the historical aspect about that. So the person that I had doing the interview was a TV person. The first interview they did, she didn't know how to save it on the Zoom. Second interview, she kind of knew how to save it, but then she did the interview from the car. I'm like, what the heck? And I was like, you know, but I was so upset. I was like, okay, so we made it. Okay, we made it a podcast put it on YouTube and it just had like a scrolling, you know, pictures on and that sort of thing. But it worked out. The sound was good. The story was good. But I was like, how, how are you going to do somebody's interview in the car? So anyway, that's a young girl. I was trying to give him the little millennial some, um, yeah, she was, she actually, she was a TV person. So I was like, I don't know what that's about, but it turned out good. Judge is real gracious with that. Listen, so <laughs> it's going to be good. And people still love it. I mean, she, whatever she puts out there, people are like, it's good. It's good. We love it. So anyway, so that was my story that I wanted to tell about you. I was like, she, because when I saw it, I was like, what the hell is she sitting in the car for? You told me she was sitting in the car. I said, excuse me, what, what? So anyway, so Monica, you know, she teaches that kind of stuff about having the right background. You see her background is beautiful. Monica would have went in on that girl. But anyway, um, <laughs> sitting in the car. But anyway, go on, Judge. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't even know where to start. I'm just absorbing all this. Uh, because it's, um, but you know what my purpose is. My purpose, I had to, I had to, I had to really kind of hone in on what my purpose was because I, like you said, I was out, out there, okay. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, all of the suggestions that I was learning in the branding class really helped me focus all those sessions and those things you told us to do, the lessons we had to do, made me focus in who my niche was and my group, okay, which helped me. And then the classes that you suggested that we can get online and do, and I did uh, uh, some of those and, and they were focusing on that. So then I began to really focus on that. Yeah. Um, I said, um, uh, the, you know, the, the book, the, you, you know, you had said, enter these contests and I never entered anything in my life like that. So, <laughs> and I did, and I was like, uh, I, I was just so thrilled to get the first award and uh, I didn't think I did anything else and I was still happy. I was really, really happy. Um, and it just, you know, I got good reviews, of course, from, the, you know, Kirkus and the rest of them, but this was my first book. So, you know, it was really, really important to me what, what was, what was going to come of this. Uh, mm -hmm. my, first, my first thing, though, was to keep my promise to my sister. Uh, to get that book out. If nothing else happened with that book, I would have, I could have had a happy girl, okay? But stuff did start happening. And, uh, you know, what I would always tell my, my, my entertainment lawyer in California, I figured you know, I'd send him the stuff and say, hey, look, I got an award. Look, I got an award. And so uh, he then, you know, the, the people I'd already met, you know, I'd already done uh, some sizzle reels and things like that for judge shows before, right? Okay, and I told him uh, through the sessions and stuff, I said, I was gonna take the, the coaching certification thing and I started researching it. And then I said, well, I don't, I don't want it like a bunch of people, you know, 
said, I, I, I know I don't want to do that. And I said, I mentioned it. And Pam said, that's not what you have to do. You can coach from a group. You can coach. And she was explaining that. I said, okay, well, then I'll go back. Because you don't have to coach one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people are worn out for doing coaching one-on-one. -on -one. You could do group right. coaching. It is really, it's, it, and, and you can even do a course and then just put it out there. And then that's, that's really coaching, but from, um, from video. So yeah, if you don't want to deal with people, what or what, that's, you know, it's, right. no. I, I, Dr. Geneva was that. Dr. Geneva got certified <laughs> as a coach and she started coaching people. And then after about a month, she says, I don't think I'm cut out for this. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I already know. I already know. And, and when you said that, and I, and I mentioned that to him, he said, yeah, he said, and the reason he was all for me, get, just getting that coaching. So he said, this is something you've been doing all your life. You've been doing it as, as a lawyer, as a judge, you've been coaching people, really guiding them, et cetera. This is nothing but a certification as to what you do. And that's because he's busy talking to these people at these networks. Okay. And, uh, and, and doing a, now looking at me as as the as a coaching uh, person who who's going to do this program of coaching, and then he just approached me with this, and I just I always just listen to him because he really spins off in this stuff, and, and then right. So, uh, but I I just listened, and I think all of the awards from the book is what really pushed him. Five awards, five awards, right? <laughs> I got a few more. I'm waiting to see. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's, you know, it was a combination, even the, the clubhouses. I, I always hear something that means something to me that I add to what I'm doing. I was busy trying to get, you know, I'm, I'm doing the collaboration with Kim Coles in the book, uh, just like Priscilla is. And, uh, and I, you know, with that 200 word bio, I think I rewrote this thing. I said, now, I know I got the bios on the website, but those are too long. And now I said, and then I, I, I really studied on how to, what do I put in this and this and that. And so I said, well, the problem, Leon, is that you didn't done too much doggone stuff. I said, wait a minute. So I was trying four to- different, Four different careers, right? She was a model. She was a teacher. She was a judge. Lawyer, um, lawyer. Lawyer, right, right. Lawyer, <laughs> I mean, entertainment lawyer, uh, Kimberly, she was doing like Motown acts and stuff like that. So it's like, right. how do you put that down in 200 words? Like, yeah. Right. And then, you know, and also I couldn't, I couldn't talk about the experience as a judge and becoming a drug court judge and changing and transforming lives for 14 years and seeing people put their lives together that were eaten out of garbage cans. And to me, the glitzy stuff I did, that kind of paled in comparison to um, it what was more meaningful to me, and that was what drew me to run. That, internet to the Hollywood, is huh? Yeah, your internet is cutting in and out. I don't know what. Oh, was I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know. I, it's my area. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Sometimes it does. Is it Comcast? No, no. I have AT and T. Of 18, I don't know what that is, but but one of the main things of when you have done so much, we all look at the thread. What is the same? What is the thread through everything that you've done? And that's where that's where it's really hard because the more you've done, it's like the it's like what is the thread between this and this and this? And so a lot of it, you, you just have to really like it does take more time with with judges because she has been a judge. People always ask her for legal advice and you know doing all these type of things, but. It's like it really comes down to really inspiration, motivation, and persevering through some hard stuff. And it's and it's like really just making sure that people are being pulled up from the bootstrap. So me and Kadena wanted to talk with her about really her going back and talking to black law students, right? Mm -hmm. Black law students specifically, because that's really where um, they they need a lot of help as well because they, a lot of them are dropping out. I mean, you was, you know, she's got a foundation, Twins for Justice at Wayne State Law School and all that kind of stuff. So we just said that's kind of like the lowest hanging fruit and obviously you can build on it. But it's so many different layers of what she can do, which is good. But we wanted to hone in on one area first. And so she honed in on one, which was the book because she's a really good writer. And then maybe from there going to making that book into a uh, screenplay and then making that into a movie. 
And then she can speak on whatever she wanted to speak once it's a movie. You know, it's like she can talk about that, whatever, you know. But that's one of the main things that I just really see for her next is really getting that. And she does have the connections in that area too, as well. So it's not, it wouldn't be like it's a long stretch. I've already told her who I saw, I saw who would play her in the movie and all that kind of stuff too. So anyway. <laughs> So anyway, so I so the la- the last because it's eight ten and we want to do a little bit of break before we do our clubhouse. If you all want to come on clubhouse, you're welcome to come. Tonight we're talking about the profitable speaker, right? Not just the speaker, but the profitable speaker. Uh, so because you could be a speaker in Toastmasters all day, right? But you don't get paid for Toastmasters. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Monica Morgan. I'm always recommending oh, things and- like uh, Judge, you could get Google Nest hubs and they help boost your internet. We can talk about that if you're interested. But oh, they help. That would be I have them all around my home for my yeah. internet signal to go stronger, but AT&T is bringing me fiber tomorrow. Ooh. Oh, that's how that works. It's that free. Is- well, they're yeah. installing it. They say there's no additional cost for now, so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Monica, can, can I say something? Uh, Pam, Monica has really helped me. You know, I, I think she really felt sorry for me, but she called me and she she helped me hook up talk to the branding class about our, our LinkedIn uh, things, our social media net. That's important. That's what I that. mm-hmm. and, You know, and then and then I, I had another one and since I couldn't I couldn't get that one off, I said, let me now do that. Do it and, and all of a sudden people I couldn't even keep up with all these people. I said, wait a minute. And 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 then I said, I'm gonna change. I said I had about 10 people on this other site. I said, I just I just started what she told me is just you know, just follow the instructions and it'll tell you. And I said, she has so much faith in me to be able to do that. I said, okay. And the next thing I know, okay. So uh, but Monica, thank you. Monica, thank you. She'll call me up and say, do this with your iPad, you know, get this. I got that. And I said, I said, she doesn't know if I know how to put this thing together, but uh, Monica, I figured it out. Okay. That's it. I'm out. Go ahead, Monica. That's what the cohort, then that was one of the things that I wanted the cohorts. When I pick each one of you all to be in the cohort together, I kind of know why you're together, you know, like, um, Alicia and Carmen, or even Charlotte was in one of the cohorts and, um, Mikhail, there's different ones that are, Demiris is not here, but I want you all to keep connected with each other besides just we in the 12 weeks together, you know, so that's why I'm saying there's some other things that possibly we could do with you as well. Next Tuesday, Kadena will will send out an email or, or put in the chat of the link to really speak with us about really just staying like in a circle to support each other because it's, it's a lot and each one of our networks can support each other people and, and the things that we know and share it's just it's it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing so thank you thank you Monica that's it that's what that's what a good cohort is supposed to do just help each other out like you know like hey you need to fix this this is how you're gonna do it that's that's it that's it cool and I love that background because she did uh Kadena was on Monica's uh webinar where she's talking about her background it's her background is like stellar right it's like it looks like Kind of looks like Sabrina looks like Star Trek a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> but she she teaches how to show up on camera, you know, and how to do all of that thing because that's what she does. She's a award winning photographer, so lighting is real important to her and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. One day I said to Pam, "I want to be a motivational speaker," and Pam said to me. Monica, people do not come to you for motivation. Where do they spend their money with you? Well, I went, wait a minute, hold it. This is my dream. This is what I want. Pam said, Monica, what do people come to you for? And so the branding accelerator gave me clarity. I was all over the place. I was trying to figure out where God was sending me. I was waiting on him to message after message. Where, where, what? And you know how they talk about that. Oh my God. Helicopter and and somebody's in trouble and they're sinking and the guy sends a helicopter. He sent this and that and the person ignored it. Okay. Well, then there was Dr. Pam. Pam said, Monica, why do people come to you? 
And I said, well, because they want to take great photos, because they want to look. She said, Monica, that's what you speak on. I'm going to show us some TED Talks of people doing that. And I was like, if you don't get this, I'm going to hit you. I was a man, he was dry as dirt, dry as sand, speaking on TED Talk, got like a million views. He was a photographer with National Geographic, dry as sand. And I said, can you do this? How many did I send you after that? It was like, when will you get it? And so her, her main thing is like, you know, she was, she could speak on being maybe a, a, a widow after a short period of time being married. She could speak on a lot of different things. It's like all the things she could speak on. I was like, nope, that ain't it. She would tell me, I said, nope, nope, nope. I don't like it. Nope. And then finally it was like, it's them pictures. How long have you been taking pictures? Over so 30 long. years. Over 30 years, yes. And not just like as a hobby, as a living, self-taught. Right. Yeah. Okay, go on. So the clarity is what made a difference to me. And then when Pam sat me down and she said, you need to develop pull questions. The pull questions are like magic because I use them in other walks of life. I use them in my speeches pull questions. What is going to tug at the audience's heart? So next week, I am in a virtual pitch contest. I am going to use pull questions. I am going to, I have three backgrounds on their way and I'm going to put them up and work with my lighting and see which one is less distracting. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. Thanks to Branding Accelerator because it helped push me forward, give me clarity. Now, Kadena, Kadena is that revenue strategist. You, she's on the phone with you. Let me tell you, you better record. You better write notes. You better have a transcript because she speaks the truth when it comes to making money. Oh my goodness. And I, money and creativity, they don't always mix, yeah. but Kadena brings it home. So Pam, Dr. Pam and Kadena together powerhouses. There is so much energy that they bring. And for me, being all over the place, not being sure where to go, not liking systems. I'm not still like a work in progress yeah. with systems. Yeah. I have yeah. to hide on that measure, but baby steps and I'm getting there and I'm still growing thanks to Dr. Pam, who doesn't leave you out there. She's not like the branding accelerator is over. We're done. She, I don't know where she gets her energy from. She needs to bottle it because I don't have, Pam sends me this, that. I, where does she get all of this energy? But it's amazing. And the resources are extremely beneficial. Some of them I've, I've put in a file, Pam, because I, I don't have the energy to have, right, but I'm right. using them. Well, as long it as you use them eventually, because you'll get it. Because I'll even send Dexter a LinkedIn message and he'll be like, why did she send me this? And, and sometimes people are like, I don't understand. Like, why is she? And then it's like, oh, oh, I mentioned this. This is that, that you know, that puts it, puts that pieces together. So yeah, those are, those are the things. Because so that, same here. I know you, you sent me some things and I'm like, huh? I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but they come, they come in handy. And next week I'm a keynote for the Detroit Athletic Club. Oh, okay. A rotary for the Rotary Club at Detroit Athletic Club. Yeah, I love the Rotary and, Club. And then after that, I'm a keynote for a, a Toastmasters District conference the following week. And I your website my, is together because you know they'll they'll start. Where are you telling people to go? MonicaMorganSpeaks.com. I've been pushing Monica Morgan Photography, but I better go back to Speaks. Well, if you're going to be speaking at the Toastmasters, I mean they're going to want to see you speaking stuff. Okay, so I'll go back to Speaks. And yeah. then I have also, thanks to Pam, I have an upcoming, it was supposed to be a one week boot camp with Black United Fund. But right now it may turn into a six week class and they're getting funders for it. Oh, good. They're getting that's funders, it. yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we met and this, this week was... and they're excited about yeah. it. And that's all because of Pam. And so- amazing things are happening as a result of my relationship with Dr. Pam and also with Kadena, the money, the revenue strategist. Yes. 
and they're finding that they're funding for you. Because one of the things Monica says, I want to speak to kids, want to speak to kids. And I said, well, you know, Black United Fund, they do like youth programming. And she knows these people. Monica knows these people like mm-hmm. junior achievements. She knows the guy, I'm, right? I'm shooting for them, Pam. They hired oh. me to shoot for them. They have a big function coming up. And then they want me to be a spokesperson because I am a junior, a former junior achiever. Yes. I got a scholarship to Dale Carnegie when I was in high school. Those are the low hanging fruits. You guys remember, need to write rem- that down. And but- I remember that Monica, Monica, we, we all went to Ampam. We went to the same high school. So I remember, I remember you being in uh, JA all those years. And I used to see you, Leonia, Leonia, Leonia and your sister uh, in the city of Detroit. Cause I worked there for almost 30 years and I would see you and, you know, walking through the- Did you ever see and- her on Swinging Time? <laughs> I don't know if I've seen you on swinging time, but I used to see you and your sister. It was you guys were it was just a major. It was always a beautiful thing to see uh passing in the skywalk from the from the Coleman Young building to the Milliner Center to the uh Renaissance Center. Yeah, the Renaissance, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was them. That was them. Yeah. All of you all have such like low hanging fruit or things that you've done. Please, like Kadena would say, go and get a 99 cent journal and write down and record some of these things, whether you use them in stories or things like that, but record the things that you've done and the people that you've met. Or, you know, like, like Monica said, junior achievement, she knows the guy she's shooting for them. You know, sometimes it's just as simple as sending a LinkedIn message and, and it, you become on someone's mind and then they'll, they'll send you um, a speaking opportunity or whatever, AARP. I know Priscilla, you have the red for your thing or whatever, but maybe you and Kimberly could do a webinar together, you know, and, and judge too, you know, me too. I'm, I'm part of that over 50 crowd too. You know what I'm saying? But different things that you put together, you do? No, are you over 50? Who? You. What, mom? I'm about to be 59. You're so funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I thought you were like 49. Okay, so see, that's what that's that black don't crack kind of stuff right there. That's what I'm saying. This is really, but really I crazy. think it would be great, Pam, if we put together a full seminar, because they're, like you said, what, what Kimberly's doing, what Judge is doing, Priscilla's doing. I mean, and you are the over 50 i mean we're like the new 40 maybe yeah. late 30s Kadena yeah. will be 50 what is it 57 57 what's your birthday I didn't, I didn't what is your birthday? 25th of april april okay. 25th yeah. so maybe we'll, we'll try and do something april 25th we'll do like a birthday party yeah. type of thing april i think 25th. you know this kind of reminds me of the wonder years Right. You know, mm-hmm. even though that's the name of a TV show, that's mm-hmm. where because then the last the next 50 don't look like the last 50. That's true. Right. For men and women. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I think that we all need that boost. I just want to say something really, really quick um, for everybody on the panel who is self-published. I want you to um, go into the PDF of your book. And at the very end of your book, I want you to put three things if it's not already there. Number one, I want you to have a page that has your picture and a hundred word bio. And then the call to action is for them to visit your speaker page to hire you as a speaker. That's one page. Okay. The second page I want you to put, the second page is an ad and it's an ad for your signature program. No pricing, no dates, just an ad for your signature offer. That's the second page I want you to put in. And then the third thing that I want you to put in is if you have book bonuses, you have this page, like for example, um, Miss Priscilla, you can go in because you're self-published and you can put at the very end that for those who attend my webinar and you just send them to the page for an automated webinar, you'll get the, like, you'll get this special gift. It might be just like a 45 minute webinar where you're giving tips, tools, and strategies, you know, or just something that's fun for them, right? Like I'm a Star Trek fan. So it might just be like you all gather together and you have this just fun moment. So think about how can you have something that's engaged? Now, for those of you who don't want to do a webinar type of thing, you can have the ad for your opt-in for your lead magnet. That could be your third page. But you put these in the back of your book because that way, every time you speak, 
when you are standing on stage and you hold your book up next to your face, because it's book face recognition, you will remember in the back of my book, I need y'all to go to the back of my book. And for those of you who want to hire me, right, this is where the information is. This is my free gift. Do you follow what I'm saying? This is this. So this is just an automatic selling tool so that you never forget to sell. Mm -hmm. So when I said at the beginning of the call that I used to step over dollars to pick up dimes, what I mean is I'd stand on the stage, give this powerful information, step off of the stage. I did not give the people in the audience an opportunity to deepen their learning right, by me extending an invitation for them to work with me. I don't want you to do that. That's what I mean. I would collect the speaker fee, but the truth is millions of dollars are made on the back end. That's what makes a profitable speaker, okay? And you have to um, learn how to market yourself. And this is going to make it easier for you if you just put it in the book. That's, I just want to share that because so many of you are authors so give yourself that permission to just let it be easy. Sales, make it subtle and you'll feel sexy and confident. You know, and also last thing is um, Dr. Pam mentioned, I, I encourage my clients to have a 99 cent notebook on the cover, put brag book. It's your book of celebration. Being an entrepreneur is hard and there will be days where you will feel depleted and exhausted and on the verge of burnout. You open your book and you can see the successes that you've experienced. And that's going to give you, right, the energy to propel yourself forward. In addition, I mean, obviously faith, but you understand what I'm saying. I, I just I want keep, to be in, in my integrity. So and, and we it can always pray helps. about it, but this is what we're talking about. It always helps too, because if you have to rewrite a bio and someone says, well, I got to rewrite my bio. And then you can open up your brag book and it's like, oh yeah, I can add that. I forgot I won that. Oh yeah, I did that. Oh, you know. And it's like, and so I used to keep it in a file and it's like, okay, I need to update my, my, my bio. And it's like, oh, okay, I need to add that, you know, cause you're, you know, we need to update the bios continually anyway. So you need to add certain things that are more relevant and things like that. I mean, some people will keep things on there, you know, it's like, it's 20 years ago. It's like, okay, well, have you done anything lately? You know, what have you done for me lately? So you want to make sure that you keep adding stuff to it. So um, we're going to, we're going to take a, um, Nine o'clock, if you all want to come with this on Clubhouse, we're there. We're going to talk about the profitable speaker and that will be good. Even if you come for a minute and I know we've been, you know, we started at seven, it's like 8.30 now. Um, even if you come and just invite other people in or whatever, and we'll bring you up to the stage. But um, also too, I put in there that the Branding Accelerator is open room started in May. Um, so if you all can share the page, like the Branding Accelerator page is there. And then basically at the bottom is like a Twitter a Facebook and a LinkedIn, just share it out, just share it and just say, hey, I took it. It was really, really good. Inbox me if you want to know anything about it. It is worth every penny or whatever, whatever. You know, that would be kind of cool to do as well. Uh huh. Monica. I just have a quick question about what Kadena said for books. Can you do the same thing in a children's book if you tailor the message to the parents? Yes, you can. But what you want to do is craft it as a craft it as who's the person that's hiring you. The best advice that I can give you anytime you do any type of ad, it's tailored for who you want to receive it. So for example, in your particular case, it's the reader. If you're tailoring it to the reader, then your message is to the parent, right? But the, I, this, I'm, th I'm so glad you asked this question. This is one more thing I want to say. I can't remember which one of you it was, but I want to say this when, it, I think it was Miss Priscilla. Create an order form for a case of your books. Ah, for yeah. a case of your books. That's the other page that goes in the back of the book. Yeah. So if you are an educational organization, a governmental organization, a corporation, right? My books are available by the case. Don't put pricing. Don't put pricing. Contact me. So um, Monica, thank you for saying that. Yes, but your ad is always focused on who's receiving it. So add that to the list to the back to add that page. Also, when you're speaking from the stage, say to the people, you know, um, if you found tremendous value in what I've shared with you today, please feel free to share my talk. Also, hire me to come into your organization. That's you what I mean add. by be loud and proud about the value you bring. Yeah. 
that is that is so so good that is how you really get a lot of speaking gigs it's just telling people once there's applauding it's like can you tell someone else how great this was so that I can get hired again um so yeah thank you guys this has been really really good um I just love seeing you and what you all are doing. It is like going up and up and up when going up. What's that song by Cardi about up and up or something like that? <laughs> we going up. No, not Cardi, not Cardi B. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to get going so we can go to the thing. But I'm so glad you all showed up. It just shows that, that you all are just really like committed to doing the thing. And I'm just really excited because... You, you all didn't have to come. Like I just said, I want to have a reunion. You know, can't see you in person. And me and Kandina are going to do something in July in Detroit. So we'll, we'll send you some information about that as well. We're going to be live in person. So maybe you can come there as well. So Monica, we'll talk to you about that as well because we want you to kind of help with some of the the photos, you know, that's, that's your thing, right? Like, so we get it all together. And Kimberly, I want to say the pictures that you took, they were beautiful. Thank I you. love those. Yes, that was good. It took you a while to get them together, but you did it. And it you too, Sabrina. Because Sabrina didn't want to take pictures either. She was like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it makes such a big difference, you know? So, yeah. So that's some, one of the things too, like the first pit stop for branding. I was just but, saying that I need new headshots. So there you go, Pam. I'm like, oh, these can't, uh, this, uh, this is old now. <laughs> That's it. We should do them every, at least every year, you know, just, mm -hmm. just to give us some new flavor, you know, Dexter, hey. you took your pictures during COVID. So COVID's over. <laughs> <laughs> so we go, go back outside. We go, go back outside. We go do it. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, guys. Well, if there's nothing else, um, we're going to get a copy of the recording. You want the copy of the recording? Sure. Okay. Oh, you know, let's take a picture. So let's take a yeah. picture and I can put that up. Command shift three. So everybody smile, look up, look up. All right. Hey. Hey. All right. So they say, make sure everybody's eyes are open and stuff like that. You know how that is. Everybody's good. You know how sometimes the person who's taking the picture say, yeah, that's a good picture. And then it's like, no, it's not. My eyes were closed. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss you? Did I not see you? This is good. I'm going to post it up on Facebook, guys. That is so cute. I like that. So Pam, I cannot come to the clubhouse tonight because I'm leaving this one and I'm going to be a guest on another podcast. I was invited to do wow. something, you know, about Picard. It just it dropped today. So I'm going to go give them the black girl's opinion of what happened today. So cool. <laughs> cool. I love it. I love it. Do that. Do I got to go. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Well, thank you guys. I will see you all later. You, okay. All right, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you.